Joey, how busy are you these days? Uh, well, aside from the usual stuff that I do for the studio, which is uh, I produce artists and you record some bands. Uh, right now, I'm doing a score for ETC. Because parang pinaparemix nila yung station ID nila. So that's something that I have on my plate. It's almost done, but uh, I need to do a revision. Uh, maybe you can come in later and have a look yeah. at how I do that. Mm-hmm. Aside from that, uh, I also write for a DJ site. It's called Digital DJ Tips. And we're the largest community of DJs online. So aside from training materials, we also have gear and software reviews. And that's what I do mainly, aside from doing the news articles. Nila. Aside from that, uh, I'm also a DJ. Um, I go by the name of DJ Joey Santos. Obviously, that's my name. That's what I do. I, I play for uh, festivals, events. Even for weddings, I'm so happy. I'm so happy for weddings. So, you know, it's fun. Uh, I get to share the music I like and you know, I get to see people after this time. It's a good thing. Aside from that, I also have a band. Uh, I'm in Haliti Gringo. I sing for the band. Uh, I write some of the songs. Uh, most of the songs, uh, most of the music gets written by my bandmate, uh, Wacky Acosta. Pero most of the lyrics, uh, ako yung gawagawa. So, we're not too busy right now because we just released an album last January. And, yun, after na release yun, parang paingam muna kami. Because we all have jobs. They're all in the advertising industry. So, you know how busy that gets. Um, eh, parang yun lang naman yung ginagawa <laughs> I'm doing a lot of things na hindi naman sila totally disparate uh, I mean, they're kind of related they're all about music they're all about performing music or DJing or recording pero at the same time, parang they're different activities so parang what I've been trying to do is I try to slot all of those activities into different categories. Like, for example, uh, when I work on the site, so DJ Tips, it's still about DJing. Uh, when I shoot those videos about reviews or when I write an article about a tutorial on how to use a certain piece of software or how to use a certain piece of hardware when you DJ, it's still about DJing. So I can comfortably sort of put all of that in like a DJ, in DJing box, right? And that is kind of separate to having like a band the man na pag sa banda, Um, that's where I put like you know recording other bands or producing an artist or writing songs. You know that's in another category altogether. So alam yun, um, I'm the type of person na sobrang nabubore ako when I do the same thing over and over. I used to work in the non-life insurance in- uh, industry like for three years. So I was a claims manager. I was an underwriter. I was also a head of marketing at the time. So, medyo na bore ako nun after doing it for three years, and I was actually doing the studio on the side. So, and I think it's just a matter of kind of, you know, categorizing everything that you're doing, and then if you're like me, na mablis ka mabore, you just tend to get certain bits and pieces from different categories that you're interested in, and you know that's how you fill your day. Uh, being a DJ and a musician, parang Uh, those two things in themselves, they sort of help each other. Because when you're a DJ, traditionally, you play other people's music. But like the modern connotation of being a DJ, uh, you also get to play your own music, your own edits, your own remixes. So being a musician, para you can bring your sensibilities about composition, arranging, and building a track. You can take those things and bring them to uh, the DJ aspect of you know uh, what you're doing. And conversely, uh, if you're a DJ, kung you're a musician as well, parang uh, y- you get to see how people react to the type of music that you play. Na hindi ka na pigeonhole into the type of genre that your band is playing, or you know, if you're a solo uh, solo performer, the kind of music that you sing or perform. I think uh, they both have their own advantages and disadvantages. Pero when you're both, uh, you can have the best of both worlds. One of the challenges about being an engineer or a music producer is you get to work with other people's music so much to the point that sometimes you don't get to work on your own music anymore. I think the longer you stay in the industry and the more people want to work with you and you know the more work gets thrown your way, uh, 
you struggle to find time to produce the music that you want or the music that you want to create. So yeah, it is a challenge to wear different hats like um, being a DJ or being in the band or you know sitting down with an artist who wants to have her song done properly or something like that. But um, I think for me uh, that's the fun part. Na I don't really have to be one kind of person uh, when it comes to working in music. Because more often than not, um, you're gonna have like. Lana, if you're like a super duper established artist, um, you're gonna be an artist like for the rest of your career unless you want to change, But right? Pero you know, since I started more or less, parang I started in, with the studio in the early 2000s. Na I was still in college, nipon ko trabaho, and so I've always had one toe dip in the back side of things, you know, um, in the production side of things, and of course the other side of me is. Sa performance naman. So, you know, I always like switching between uh, those two facets of being a musician. Uh, having different, having different uh, experiences when it comes to performing music, I think that really helps a lot uh, when you work with other, other artists. Because essentially, um, the way a music sounds in the final or the finished product um, well, a large chunk of the time, not all the time, but a large chunk of the time, um, it didn't really sound like that uh, in the early stages. Because it's what happens. It's a product of all the people in the room, um, you know, chipping in their ideas, editing um, creative thought, you know, taking some stuff out, adding stuff in, you know, sometimes even arguing or fighting about the way something's supposed to sound like, you know, all of those things factor into what the final output sounds like. So I really think it's important to make music with other people. You know, um, lal na ngayon na you basically have all the technology to produce music on your computer. Kahit na sa phone, pwede mong gawin, di ba? Pero I think what's real fun for me, and you know, this happens all the time na. I always think that I can come out like with the best version of a song that I made, and then when I introduce it to like my bandmates or when I introduce it to like uh, a friend na nagdi DJ, parang parate may comments yan na o bah dito pwede mong ibahin or pangalim ng gitara dito let's add in like you know a synth or let's put a drum fill instead of like um, this guitar riff parang ganon. And in the end, um. You know, um, I think that's a trade-off that you have to do, uh, especially if you're a composer. Na, if you love the music that you make so much that you don't want other people to touch it, by the time that you bring it to like a band setting or you know, parang if you're collaborating with someone, you really have to give that ownership to the other person then or the other group of people that you're working with. Uh, that's what music is about, I think. Yeah. Um, I have a recording studio. It's called Love One Another Sound Production. And the bands or the artists that come here to record, parang they all have. It's two things. Either they have the full song ready, na they'll just come in and then we'll record them. We'll do some slight arranging, some slight production ideas, mix, and then you know, yeah, it's good to go. That or uh, you have the kind of artist na parang he or she just has an idea of what they want. So parang kunya singer songwriter yan. Tapos, okay, I have the chords of my song, I have the lyrics of my song, I have the melody, but I want it to sound like a full band arrangement. So can you guys help me out? So when when that happens, um, you know, we sit down with them and then uh, talk about how they want it to sound like, you know, um, get the feel for what the artist wants to achieve more or less. So yeah, and then uh, they come into the studio. Either we get musicians to play on the song, or you know. Uh, we program them depending on the type of music uh, that they want, and then we record them. Once you're done recording, we edit. Uh, we do the post production stuff, mix. You know, have it mastered outside, and yeah, that, that's the that's mostly the process, like in a nutshell, for recording. I, I think, you producer, because it's something that's changed so much from the time of like, um, the Beatles, George Martin, na. Uh, Basically, it was the fifth Beatle, diba? Na, siya nang susulat ng harmonies, siya nang susulat ng string parts, you know. Um, 
that was a producer back then or like Phil Spector na gagawa siya ng recording concept of how something's supposed to sound like you know his wall of sound or Brian Eno who makes like all of these great ambient you know pieces like before uh, today parang being a producer can be either somebody who gets super you know up close with the musicians and the music in every session or it could be somebody who's kind of hands off like Kunetis he Rick Rubin na you know he's done work for like Beastie Boys um most recently Kanye West um Metallica alam mo um iba-ibang styles yan eh and being a producer means you know there isn't really like a hard and fast rule about what you have to do to be a good producer basta malabas mo lang yung music na gusto ng banda. When I first started recording, 2002, um, yung internet at the time, it wasn't in its infancy, pero hindi pa rin siya as advanced with the way we know the internet to be today. Like, there wasn't YouTube at the time. Sure, there was file sharing in the form of Napster, Kaza, LimeWire, Audio Galaxy, and all that. Pero hindi pa ganun kabilis. Kumbaga, the broadband speeds that we have today, we didn't have that back then. And then now, um, apart from apart from the internet, you also have all of, uh, this new parang production software, production and recording software that's gotten so advanced already to the point that um, a lot of electronic dance music artists, the software that they use, you could actually buy it on your own and then you know you have access to the same sounds you have access to the same workflow that they could use there shampe may mga tutorials in online that you can watch you know see how like a certain producer um studies a track you know produces it polishes it makes it viable for the dance floor so i think in a lot of ways um technology and music uh they're really intertwined and you know um it's really true in the uh in the way that um Sometimes, um, existing industries, like for example, recording industry, um, uh, these things can easily crumble uh, whenever it makes a shift to digital. Uh, that's what happened with digital recording. Now, you know, um, I think kung nag start out ng studio in 1992, hindi ako ng recording software. Fifty hundred pesos, diba? Um, of course, you know, I don't want to encourage piracy. I mean, that was just being young and foolish of me. But the point I'm trying to make is, um, if it used to cost like a couple of million pesos to put up a small recording studio back in the day, and then suddenly with like a week's allowance, pwede ka gumawa ng sarili mong studio, you know that there's a disruption that's gonna happen somewhere down the line. And I'm certainly feeling that right now. Um, wala nang major labels. People don't buy CDs anymore. You know, technology has that habit of changing the way people consume and even purchase things. Um, f- for one thing, um, yung clientele namin ngayon in the studio, it's not so much bands anymore. Kasi for one thing, it's a lot easier to record at home and the technology to record has gotten a lot cheaper. Parang you could actually buy a USB microphone and record your voice, record your acoustic guitar. Dati, wala pang USB mic. Pupunta ka pa sa studio. Like, you're gonna go to our studio we're gonna mic you up, you know, do everything. But now, you can do all of those things at home and for considerably less. So, one effect that's had on us is, syempre, magkakaroon niya ng shift in the client base that you're serving. Uh, one thing is, you know, we don't have as much bands anymore, primarily because a lot of bands would prefer to record at home. Alal na in the style of music that we're keen on producing, which is like ma indie rock, uh, indie pop kind of music, um, yeah, but as, aside from that, um, we've also gotten, you know, a lot of corporate clients who, you know, before they'd only want to work like with the larger companies and the more established ones. But ngayon, since we need the minimum budget to more production, and you know, uh, they really want to pinch pennies when they can. Um, sometimes they'd want to go to like a boutique studio like ours. Tapos, you know, since we have. The facilities already, like you know, the software that you need to do audio post production or commercial spots or TVCs and radio ads, since available na yan to like smaller studios like us, parang 
we can also get that share of the market nowadays. As opposed to, you know, again, if this were the 90s, sobrang hindi namin magagawa. Kasi, alam mo, aside from lacking the technical expertise, we wouldn't have the money for the equipment. So I think in a lot of ways, technology will really change the way people do business. And, you know, if we don't do our best to try to adapt to how rapid things are changing, may iwan nang talaga tayo. And, you know, no matter what business you're in, uh, in one way or another, digital will head your way and, you know, sisirain niya kung ano mang traditional hierarchies or bureaucracies we have. So, um, being in the position of a DJ and a musician and also a writer about technology, parang, I'm always like at the front of knowing all of these changes and, you know, for me, sobrang exciting yun. I mean, of course, it's scary. Um, parang, I don't know what's gonna happen like a year from now. I don't know if the studio will be around a year from now or I don't know if we're gonna be serving the same kind of clients a year from now. Pero, I think the fact that nothing stays the same is the thing that really keeps me going and you know it makes me want to learn stuff even more so i think that's a plus for me as opposed to you know being something to be fearful about yeah i think even as technology changes or equipment gets better or cheaper or worse or you know whatever what have you parang not just being a musician or a producer but being a person who has knowledge about the skills that you possess and the industry that you're in, that's going to play an even more important role down the line. Because parang like right now, kung engineer ka, if you know the pro- if you know the principles and fundamentals of engineering, kahit anong mangyari pa sa hardware equipment mo, kahit anong mangyari pa sa software equipment mo, those principles are gonna be universal. Those are those things aren't gonna change. So I think like you know uh, if you're given like a couple of hundred thousand pesos to invest in you know equipment, software, or knowledge, um, I'd put my money on knowledge and learning how to do your craft. Because the stuff, the things nyan, um, those can be taught to other people. And that's something that you can share uh, when you're a little bit older and, you know, when you're a little bit further down the line. But also, at the same time, these are things that you can apply to any situation in your industry, regardless of kung ano pa yung mangyaring technological disruption in the future. You know, like, um, if you're an engineer in, like, the 70s, you know, it's 2014, yung principles mo of EQ, compression, reverb, delay, all of these things, I mean, they still hold true. Of course, the tools that we're using are vastly different from what they were back then. But you know, um, you could go into a session and then sabi mo sa engineer, parang oh, magbawas ka naman ng 80 hertz roll off ka dyan. Or you know, uh, I want like a I want like a limiter on the mix bus or something. You know, these are things that still hold true, and you know, it's been decades since uh, those principles were first founded, and you know, they're still in use today. So I think. The best way to future proof yourself is to learn as much as you can. I, I mean, you know, in the pond of your future, mo na sarili. If you want to be a musician, you only have to do one thing. You have to go all in. Hindi po yung parang, you know, 5050 ka, uh, you're a musician, and then at the same time, parang, you know, you have second thoughts na parang shit. Pero ba mo bura? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, you, you have to go all in. You can't be half and half about it. You can't be like, you know, okay, um, I'm gonna try to play music, but you know, if it doesn't work out, parang sige, uh, I'll just work somewhere else or ganyan, ganyan. Parang, I mean, habang bata ka pa, dapat gwin mo na siya ng todo todo. Give it like a hundred percent. Give it like a hundred ten percent, and then if it doesn't work out. Then that's when you think whether you wanna keep going at it or not. Pero hindi yung half-hearted na effort, kasi half-hearted efforts will only get you half-hearted results. You need to tune and go, cause like you know I'm the one to talk, cause like you know I work in a, an office and then I work here in the studio, and then you know all of these other things that I I was doing. SEO writer pa ako nung uso maging SEO writer. I used to teach English to Koreans when you know it wasn't super big in the early 2000s. 
But you know, uh, that's one thing that I discovered. Na parang kung hindi ka talaga decidido, uh, walang mangyayari. So you can apply that to like anything in your life. 